Unfortunately, we have a very small amount of time, so I'm going to give you a super quick uh, talk about the hominids that we see here and the hominids that have been found here. Now, the story starts in terms of South African paleontology in 1922, when a gentleman called Raymond Dart came to South Africa. Now, Raymond Dart was to head up the, the Department of uh, Anatomy at Wits. And the first thing Raymond Dart wanted to do was he wanted to start by making a museum. And this museum was supposed to be of, of fossil, he's picked it up for me, thank you, of fossil specimens, thank you. Now, in 1924, he sent all of his students out into the field and said, please will you collect as many fossils and things from where you, from where you go on holiday. I think students are much better then because they actually did do work on their holidays. <laughs> so, one of the first things uh, that Raymond, Raymond Dart saw was one of his students brought back uh, a baboon. Now, a baboon skull looks like this. This is actually a real one, too. Now, the state of preservation of this baboon skull was amazing. Raymond Dart was, was, was um, suitably impressed and asked, sent a letter to the guy who owned the land where this baboon, baboon skull came from. Now, this was an area, an area called Tome. Now, Tome is some um, 200, 300 kilometers sort of south, southwest of here and is contained in, in the same geological area as, as the one we're in at the moment. So it has the same level and the same processes of fossilization, same processes of preservation. Now, in 1924, he, got, he received two crates from this lime mine, which was similar to the lime mines here, except it was open, open cast. The first one he opened contained this. Now, this on its own is, an, is a truly remarkable fossil. The brain is the only fossil soft tissue in order to fossil, uh, that fossilizes. Now the way this happens is very unique. What you need is you need a small fissure in the skull, something similar to what would happen to this guy, a small fissure, and what happens is sediment fills up the cranium, fossilizes, and then parts of the cranium then fall off. And it leaves you with this. Now this, what we call a brain endocast. And you can tell a lot from a brain endocast, mostly on what Raymond Dart was most astounded with, above and beyond anything else, was the position of this here. Now this is the forma magnum. This is where the spinal column enters the brain. Now instantly, Raymond Dart found this. He knew that this was exactly what everyone was looking for. Everyone was looking for the missing link. Everyone thought that there was one step between apes and man after Charles Darwin. Okay, the problem is now that we know that it's not true. It's now much more complicated. But Raymond Dart instantly knew that this is what they were looking for. This was the missing link. The reason he knew this is because of this, the position of this former magnum. Now, the former magnum tells us a lot about the mobility of, of a specimen. Now, if you turn all of these guys upside down, we can see there's a trend occurring. What happens is the former magnum in something like a chimpanzee, which is a knuckle walker. Uh, its head is orientated parallel to the ground. And in order to do that, the spinal column needs to come out at a different angle. If I was to show you something like uh, an antelope or a dog, the spinal column goes in almost at the back of the skull because its spinal column is, is horizontal and its eyes are orientated wow. to the horizon. As something becomes more bipedal, as we have, this former magnum shifts to where we are at the moment, where we see the former magnum right at the base of the skull because our spine runs vertically and because we need to orientate our eye level horizontal. Now, what happens is through, through the evolutionary process, we see this changing. So we see Mrs. Where's Mrs. Plez? Mrs. Plez, we can see here, chimpanzee. And we can see it starting to shift, and it goes forward, forward, forward. And we can see this as being uh, indicative of our change in locomotion. Uh, when we spoke about earlier, we said that, that actually the, the diagnostic feature of hominids was the bipedal locomotion. Now, this is what we see in Mrs. Plez and Homo agaster and Homo habilis. We see this, this former magnum positioned so that it would enable much more predominant bipedal locomotion, which is basically what we're looking for. Now, Raymond Dart found this and found this skull and found that it would be orientated when it was 
put on the other part in a position that was directly underneath the skull. So that told him that this was a bipedal hominid. Uh, and that really was what everyone was looking for. The other contenders to this, of course, uh, were the Piltdown Man and a specimen called Pithecanthropus. Now, both of those specimens, the Piltdown Man was a, an elaborate hoax, and the Pithecanthropus was proved to be much, much younger. So, basically, it came down to Raymond Dart and the Tongue Child. Now, not everyone believed this, unfortunately, and it would take 25 years uh, before Mrs. Pleasure was found right here at Stokefontein in order by Robert Broom, and then people started to believe and look to South Africa for the, the origin of, of, of um, human species and the, the central point of, of evolution. Now, Mrs. Plez is exactly the same date and species, Australopithecus africanus, as the tongue child. As we go on through history, things change a little bit. And basically what happens is everything... Uh, what was previously thought is that the first thing to change was the size of the brain. That's what everyone thought was happening. And so what happened with the Piltdown Man, why it was so convincing, is he took a gorilla, this is a chimpanzee, and the hoax was that they glued the gorilla, they filed down the, the um, canines, and they glued it straight on like that. And one of the guys said, listen, go and dig in that pit, I think there might be a fossil there. And everyone believed this is exactly what evolution had. Uh, the process of elite evolution happened in terms of hominids. The brain was to grow first, then the dentition was to change. Now we know that to be very different. We know that from the town child and from Mrs. Plez, that the, the dentition is the first thing to change, the diet is the first thing to change, which then allows the brain to start changing.